Today we're gonna to be taking you through the steps on how to dry brine a steak. And these simple tips are gonna let you turn any choice or select steak into one that's just as tender as a USDA prime. So stick with us right through the end and you're gonna up your steak game. So the idea for this video actually came from you, the community. We are doing a dry brine and someone suggested in the comments that we ought to compare that to the method where we just seasoned the steak an hour before putting it into the cast iron pan. We love reading your comments, so if you've got any other ideas for steak experiments, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And you know what? Maybe it'll result in another steak experiment video. So here we've got two one and a half inch New York strip steaks. We have them specially cut. They're from the same loin. We know they're from the same cow. We talked to the butcher and really wanted to understand were these grass fed animals, were they hormone free, were they antibiotic free? And sure, that's gonna cost a little bit more, but it's worth it and you can taste it in the cut of beef. So to start with, we're just gonna move one of these steaks out of the way and then we're gonna get ready to dry brine and we're using sea salt. You don't have to worry about the fact that these are large chunks. The 48 hour dry brine is gonna give these chunks more than enough time to absorb into the steak itself. And we like the minerality of the sea salt over a traditional kosher salt, but of course kosher salt is absolutely fine too. Now that we've got this side seasoned up, we're just gonna to wanna to flip it over and get the other side as well. And go on generously, you don't have to worry about over seasoning a steak this thick. So be really generous with that salt. And now let's just make sure we've got the edges here. Pick up some of that excess salt that's hit the cutting board. Perfect, just like that. Now we've got a perfectly seasoned steak and we're ready to transfer it to the cooling rack. That'll just lift the steaks up a little bit and ensure we've got proper air circulation over top of the steak and underneath it as well. And then we're putting that cooling rack on a cookie sheet as well. And that's just in case there's a little bit of juice that drips out the bottom. We just don't wanna make a mess in the fridge. So now we're just gonna take our unseasoned steak here and put it back into the butcher's paper and wrap it up. And we're wrapping it up fairly tightly because we don't want this to oxidize in the fridge at all. So we'll put this back in the fridge We'll let both of these steaks sit there for 48 hours, and then we'll come back and sear these steaks in cast iron, and we'll check out the difference. We'll see you in 48 hours. Now we're not gonna have to worry about this brining method drying out the steaks. What it's gonna do is it's gonna pull some moisture out of the steak, but that moisture, it's gonna be infused with all of the salt that's encrusted around the steak. And over the next 48 hours, it's gonna be reabsorbed into the steak and just provide a perfect level of seasoning that's even throughout the steak. That brine is also gonna break down some of the intermuscular tissue, and that's what's gonna lead to a tremendously tender outcome here. So it's 48 hours later and we're back with the two steaks. We took these out of the fridge and now we're going to do a little bit of a comparison. So we'll open up the one steak that's been in the butcher's paper. We've got the one that's been dry brining for 48 hours here and then we've got the one that we just took out of the butcher's paper here as well. So if you look at the difference between these steaks, you'll definitely see a richer red on the dry brine steak. And that's also just to its touch. This is absolutely bone dry on the surface of the steak. So that's really gonna help when we put it into the cast iron pan because all of the energy from the cast iron pan is gonna go into caramelizing the surface in the Maillard reaction. So that should lead to a better crust. Here, we still have some moisture. We'll pat that down, but it's also just a, a redder steak and it looks like it just came out of the cooler at the butcher's. So what we're gonna do now is we'll season this one up Again, going on with a generous amount of seasoning. Now with that steak seasoned up, we're gonna need to let this sit for an hour just so that salt absorbs in. But in the meantime, I wanna show you one other unique thing that highlights a difference here. If we lift up this cooling rack, but you'll see there's no moisture on here. So all of the moisture that's come out of the steak that's been dry brining has just reabsorbed back into the steak. And that salty moisture is now just gonna provide a perfect seasoning evenly all the way through the steak. Now we'll let these rest for an hour before we fire up the cast iron pan and sear these off.
So now we've had this steak resting for an hour and that's allowed the salt to primarily absorb into the steak, but it's also allowed the steaks to come up to room temperature before searing it in cast iron. The other ingredients you're gonna need for this cook, we've got some rosemary and you're gonna wanna ruffle this up a little bit. Just scrunch it in your hands before we use it. We've got some peeled garlic cloves that we've just lightly crushed, some compound butter, and some regular butter. And then finally, we've got a little bit of water because that's what we're gonna use to just check the temperature of our pan before dropping in our steaks. So we're starting with a 12 inch cast iron pan. We're gonna ignite the burner, put it on high, and get our pan down warming up. So now that we've got our pan heating up here, just to make sure it's at the right temperature, we're gonna dip our fingers in the water and release a few droplets onto the surface of the pan. If those water droplets instantly evaporate like this, you know you're at the right heat for searing your steaks. So once you're at the right temperature, we're gonna add in some avocado oil. And avocado oil has a smoke point of 520 degrees Fahrenheit, and we need that when we're searing on high heat here. You don't wanna use olive oil, very low smoke point, so make sure you're using something like avocado oil, rapeseed oil, those types of high smoke point oils. Now when we drop the steaks in the pan, we're gonna leave them there for four minutes. We're gonna get the heat of that pan reacting with the surface of the steak in a mired reaction to create an incredible crust. So we're at the four minute mark. We're just gonna flip these over. Now we're gonna add in some butter, the garlic, the rosemary. Now we're also going to want to make sure we get the fat cap. So periodically just turn the steaks on the side and sear the fat cap. And we'll let these sear for another four minutes or until we hit an internal temperature of 128 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature that we're looking for for a perfect medium rare steak. We're going to let them rest untented and we'll add in a little bit of butter, the compound butter that we've made that will just melt. So now that we've had these resting, let's just take a look and do a comparison here. To me, it's pretty obvious which is which. We've got the 48 hour dry burn over here and we've got the salted one hour before the cook right here. And let's just check the difference between the crust. And the way I like to do that, just drag your steak across the surface you can hear the crust that's formed on this guy. Now let's try it here. You can still hear there's a bit of a crust, but it's just a little bit lighter. It's not quite as hard and quite as formed, so there'll be just a little bit less texture when we bite into it. But both of these steaks look absolutely incredible, so now let's slice in. All right, before we cut in, it is kind of noticeable that there's more juice that's already seeped out of the steak that wasn't the 48 hour dry brine. So we'll see if that makes any kind of difference in the taste test. Nice medium rare right there. We'll see if we got the same outcome over here. Oh yeah, beauty. So now we're just gonna take a few pieces out of the middle here and see how this turned out. All right, so we weren't expecting any difference in the doneness. We've got a decent amount of gray around the edge, but that's just because we're searing off in a hot cast iron pan. And we've got some relatively thick steaks. So now let's go for the taste test. Mm. That is a great steak. Nice crust, great flavor profile. You can taste the salt, but it's not too overpowering. There's no crystals of salt left on this steak. This is, you know, all around a really, really good outcome. Nice and juicy, very tender. No complaints on this one, really. But now, let's try the 48 hour dry brine. Mm. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely incredible. Now, folks, the tenderness on that steak was just remarkable. It was melt in your mouth. This just, it almost fell apart. It was absolutely delicious. You really notice a difference from a tenderness perspective. From an actual taste perspective, there's definitely more crunch from the crust than the other steak, but the overall seasoning, I think it's actually a pretty similar profile to the one that we seasoned an hour before the cook. So all in all, I'm obviously gonna give the win here to the 48 hour dry brine, but there's an important caveat. If you don't have the time to pre-season your steak for two days, then just don't do it. At the end of the day, barbecuing is supposed to be fun and you can accomplish 90% of the outcome just by seasoning an hour before you do your cook. 
Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, give it a like below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you thought this video was good value, consider subscribing. We've got loads of more steak experiments to come. And if you haven't checked out our other steak experiment videos, there's links here on the screen to a few others that you might wanna go check out. Thanks again.